Welcome to Behind the 90 with Nika's podcast. This is so surreal. I really thoroughly enjoy um, talking about my story, uh, having other people share their stories. And so here I am. I've done segments on WXYZ, AM 1200, and I've always been looking for opportunities to come on the airways and share stories. And I said, you know what? Sometimes we got to create our own opportunities and stop looking for everyone else to give us an opportunity. So here I am again. Welcome to Behind the 90 with Nika, where we share stories. We get to the root of the problem and stay away from the surface. I thought it would be really fitting to talk about me before we get into other people's stories. I feel like, you know what? I think it's important for me to be transparent and share my story. Well, today's topic for me is how I grew up. I grew up in a single parent household. My parents divorced when I was, say, about 10 years old. Growing up, I was a daddy's girl for a short time. And then when my father and uh, my mom divorced, it appeared, and this is just how I felt, and this is the hard part about sharing your story. And sometimes people are reluctant because some people feel like you're throwing them under the bus. When you're not, you're just sharing your experience. And so that's why I think some people shy away from telling their stories because they fear hurting other people. This is not my intent. My intent is only to share my experience and not to incriminate or badmouth anybody. It is just to share my story. So here we go. So like I said, I grew up in a single parent household. Uh, my parents divorced when I was 10 years old. And I felt like when my parents divorced, it felt like my father had divorced us too. Now I knew that my father really loved us. When I say us, I have a sister. I have a host of other siblings too. However, I grew up with one older sister. She's four years older than me. Um, so, you know, I felt like, like I said, that my father had divorced us when he divorced, when my mom, when my parents divorced. So that was kind of a hard pill to swallow, but you come to accept it. So I grew up in a single parent household. I, you know, at some point I did not realize that um, it was needed to have another parent in the household because my mother, she really did do a very good job of making sure all our needs were met. But like I said, I didn't necessarily give a lot of thought to, hey, my dad should be helping here. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't. Um, he had moved on and started a new family, and he was taking care of that family. So again, I didn't take give much thought to that because, again, my mother was very good about um, just taking care of me and my sister. We didn't. I didn't feel like we were missing out a whole lot because she took care of things so well. Um, she introduced us to our faith, you know, help us um, focus on our relationship and with Christ. So while my faith was developed because my mother created opportunities for us to go to church. So that was great. My mother was a real, well, was, she is a very, very good woman. Um, I, like I said, I couldn't ask for a better mom. She's always been very supportive. Um, I can recall, didn't have much money growing up because when, like I said, when my father left, he wasn't supportive. So my mom, again, we didn't know that there was a struggle. So I recall my mom, when she was going, she, you know, because when my parents were married, she was a stay at home. But when they divorced, she, you know, she picked herself up. Not that she was down, but she picked herself up and she went back to school. And I remember us going with her. 
we would, she went to Wayne County Community College, and we would wait in the car for her um, as she went to classes. And sometimes we would, uh, me and my sister, we would find an empty class, and we would be in that class and just, you know, waiting for her. During that time, I think people were more supportive of the fact that there were single parents out there. So, again, we would go with my mom. Either we would stay in the car. Back then, it was in the 70s. It was it was safe. It was safer, I should say. And so we would go with my mom and we would either, like I said, wait in the car or we would uh, go inside and find an empty class and just hang out. And, you know, just want to make sure that we were safe. Um, again, didn't know there was such a struggle. My mother, uh, like I said, like my cousins that we would spend time with on the weekends, they had a two parent household. So we would go places like to the mall, do window shopping. And like I said, some of those cousins, they had two parent households. So they had two incomes and my mom just had the one income. So when we would go out, me and my sister knew that we probably wouldn't get what our cousins would be getting because we grew up, we were in a single parent household. So we would go eat and me and my sister, bless my mom's heart, again, she always wanted us to, you know, not feel excluded or left out. So we would go, let's say to McDonald's and me and my sister would split, let's say a happy meal. And at the time, you see your cousins getting, you know, their own separate Happy Meal. And you say to yourself, man, I want more. But that's what my mom could afford at the time. Now, keep in mind, she was in school because she wanted better for us. But at the time, that's that's what she could afford. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Again, my mother was, you know, exposing us to the finer things, but on a on a limited, limited, very limited budget. So it didn't feel like we missed out too much. She was safe for us to go on vacations, whether it was Niagara Falls, uh, something like that, something not too uh, expensive. But she would again, she would create opportunities for us to do things. Um, so that's that. In terms of my family, like I said, my father would pop in here and there. Again, a loving father, but just not the type of father that knew how to provide. So my mother made it a point. She did provide. And she and I think the good thing, one of the other good things about my mom, she never, ever, ever talked bad about my dad. And so that helped. So we were free to love him, even if he wasn't doing what he needed to do for us. She never discouraged us from loving him. And if I did say something negative about my dad, she would say, now remember that's your dad. So I can appreciate that because that right there, it it, it went very far for me to just mm, exercise some forgiveness for someone. Um, Because I didn't really understand my father's story in terms of why he wasn't able to be what he needed to be for me and my sister. But later when I learned of his story, um, I had a little more grace for him. But again, I didn't feel like we missed out because my mom was such a great provider. She was an upstanding and is an upstanding woman of God. So I appreciate her for being the woman that she is. When you think about it, mother set the tone for all relationships. And my mother set the tone, whether it was implicit or explicit, that you respect people and you get respect. You do the right thing by people and they'll do the right things by you. So I appreciate her for the examples that she has set and she continues to set uh, in my life. She has been the rock of my life. In terms of my father, there is a happy ending. Like I said, he did. My father was a loving father. But when my parents divorced, like I said, I felt like he had divorced us too. But at some point, he came back around. Sometimes it was in and out. But when I got married in 2004, I recall my mother saying, well, I wanted my mother to walk me down the aisle. And I recall my mother saying, no, you must have your dad. We will both walk you down. 
Uh, He still brought you into the world. And again, it's those moments when I look at this woman and say, wow, because some people would just want to take the limelight like I did this. She has never been a prideful woman. And so when she said that again, there was a teachable moment for me in her examples of how she loves on people, forgives people, has clearly made me into the woman of God that I am today. Now, I'm not perfect, not trying to be self-righteous, but it's those examples that have carried me. So, of course, you know, I trust my mom. I allowed my father to walk me down the aisle. The relationship, that was the start of a better relationship with my dad. Um, It was a renewal. And if it wasn't for my mother, I would not have had that. So years pass, you know, my father, we were working on our relationship. And again, it continued to get better. He shared his story Um, how he grew up, and it made sense why he could not be there for me and my sister. It really did make sense. So I started to ask a lot of questions, and that's the important thing. When we have adults in our lives that could shed light on things that will help us, we got to take advantage of those opportunities So I took advantage of those opportunities. My father shared some things. Um, He was the product of a rape. Uh, He was born to a woman at 13 years old. He didn't have a father in his life. He was raised by a teen mom. Um, So it kind of made sense, and his grandmother, but it kind of, well, not kind of, it made sense. Light bulb moment, it made sense why he could not be there for us the way we needed him to be. He hadn't completely grew up. Uh, he had a very traumatic upbringing, so it made sense. But the silver lining is, My father, before he died during COVID, December 17th, 2020, when I say our relationship was beautiful, it wasn't perfect, but it was beautiful. It was nice that we got an opportunity to bond. It was nice that I was able to ask all the questions that I needed to ask to help me understand his story and my own in terms of how I'm wired because I look just like him. I'm his twin. I am definitely his twin, no doubt about it. But our relationship got stronger. And when he passed away, I had peace. I had peace that we had worked on our relationship. Now, remember, for many years, We did not have a relationship. It was on and off. But after me getting married and my mother setting the tone to let him in, it was a work in progress, but it was a good, it was a better relationship. And before he passed away, like I said, in December 17, 2020, due to COVID, I had asked so many questions because there was something inside of me that said I wasn't going to have him much longer. So I made sure to ask a lot of questions and I got a lot of questions answered. He was so transparent. And if you're listening, if you're out there listening, I encourage you, if you have your parents in your life or any, you know, elderly person that has, you know, that can share stories and and help shed light on things that are so dark, ask those questions. You don't want to be here with unanswered questions. So ask those questions and hope they'll be honest with you. Thanks for joining us on today's episode. If you enjoyed the story time, you can also share your story. Contact us at behindthe90 at gmail.com or you can reach us at 313 769 
5705. We would love to hear your story because it's through our stories that we help one another. Don't forget to subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Leave us a review and share with your friends to help us reach more listeners. Stay tuned for more insightful stories and discussions. Until next time, take care and keep exploring new connections with us. Bye for now.